All right, welcome. Today we're going to be looking at the Electronics Basic Electronics Kit from Matrix Technology Solutions, and we'll demonstrate a little bit about how that kit works. Before we get into that, a little introduction in case you guys are not familiar with uh, who we are, what we do. My name is Rob. I'm one of the support technicians here at Amtec. And since 1979, Amtec has been providing educators with engineering workforce and technical educational solutions and equipment in Maryland, Virginia, West Virginia, Delaware, and Washington, D.C. We offer expert consultation to help to, uh, to help define program and classroom needs and provide solutions to meet those needs. We also offer installation and training to ensure that the solution has adequate space and the setup meets the needs for the safe and effective operation of the equipment. We provide the physical install and setup of equipment, which is done by one of our in-house technicians. We also provide training to teachers so that we can ensure that they're able to safely and properly use the equipment and ensure that the equipment is able to meet the program objectives. And then we also so offer support and service. Uh, we provide additional training and development workshops, maintenance contracts, and then lifetime phone and email support for all of our products. Three of the areas that we've traditionally focused on, uh, design and fabrication, Workforce and technical training, and engineering education. So, like I said, we're going to look at the Electronics line by Matrix. This is a product line developed to simplify the process of learning and teaching about electronics and electricity. It's an economical way to get students hands on experience with real world electrical components. Each of the components has a corresponding circuit symbol that can help the students recognize these components in the, in the real world or in an electrical schematic. So let's take a look at what is inside the kit. Let me switch it over here. All right. So the first thing that we've got is the workbook. This comes in PDF form with the kit. I've printed it out here so I have a copy in front of me that I can take a look at and follow along as well as we're going through some of the exercises. Right. Next is the Electronics Work Board. So this is what we're going to be using pretty much the rest of the, uh, the time. It's a 200 by 300 millimeter work area. It's got 35 of these metal posts. Each post has four sides on it that the components will clip into. And we'll look at that in one second. Speaking of components, the components all come in a nice uh, precision cut foam case. Everything has a place as indicated by the diagram underneath the foam so that you know where everything is and everything can be organized and put away nicely after each lesson. Um, and like I said, each of the components has the, uh, the symbol on it from what it is so that the students through repetition can become familiar with those components and, have, and what they look like. All right, next up is the power supply. I've already plugged in the power supply uh, that, you know, for the US power, but it does come with some adapters, uh, again, international companies. So we've got European, UK, uh, and uh, an Australian plug as well. Uh, as I said, I've already plugged mine in for ease, and it's just a standard, uh, you know, standard 12 volt adapter. All right, we've got some odds and ends here. Um, in the electric, uh, electricity, magnetism, and materials or the EMM accessory pack. So we'll go through that as well. That has starts out with the alligator clip, so black and red leads for different exercises there. It's got some pencil lead. Again, we'll use that for different experiments and exercises throughout the book. A wooden disc. A couple small pieces of copper. A compass. Small compass, just a standard magnetic compass. Some steel wool. This is just a standard magnet. It does have the north and south identified there. A metal pin. And it's got some light bulbs. Now I've already got two of these on my components, but it's got a pack of light bulbs as well. We're going to use that for our experiments as well. So let's go through some of these exercises so you can get an idea of the kit, how the kits work and some of the things and concepts that, uh, that the kit will help teach. Now we're gonna switch over to the PDF so you can get a look at what I'm looking at as well. 
So again, Locktronics is going to take you through each of the chapters. We're going to start with conductors and insulators, move into circuits, how electric current works, and then eventually into electromagnetism, switches, fuses, and resistors. And then at the end, there are some quizzes and a teacher's guide as well. So a pretty comprehensive learning package here for students to use. All right, worksheet one. We are just going to basically use basic navigation of the components, how they work, you know, and, and setting up a simple, a simple circuit. Again, at the bottom, uh, the components here with all their symbols. Again, something you're going to see quite a bit of uh, to to really hammer those uh, those symbols home. We have a symbol for battery and a link and a sampler that we're all going to use in this uh, in this exercise here. So, we're going to start out. Um, build a circuit that makes a light bulb light. So I'm going to mirror this one that's got here. Let me switch back over to my board. Let me show you what I'm doing there. Again, just taking these components out one by one. They have these clips in the bottom, uh, so they snap into these posts pretty nicely. They're pretty secure in there. And we're going to see if we can make a light bulb light up. There we go. Pretty clearly see that light bulb light up. All right, let's move to the next page. So the next page is going to have us swap out one of these carriers for the sampler. Let me just show you what it's asking us here. So swap out a carrier for a sampler. So I'll show you what that sampler looks like. And then we're going to try some different, I don't have all of these items, but I do have some of those odds and ends that I was talking about here. And then we can uh, fill out this table with materials that conduct and materials that insulate and try to identify some of the properties that these materials have in common. And again, just to demonstrate some of those, uh, some of those properties. All right, so let me take a look, see what that carrier looks like. So this is a, the same component, essentially. It's got these two posts at the top. They are not connected right now. Our goal is to connect them and see which things will light up the light bulb and which things will not. Again, things that light up the light bulb will be considered conductors. Anything that doesn't will be considered an insulator. So I'm going to start with that metal pin that I've got. All right, you pretty clearly see that's going to light that light bulb up. Metal, it's going to be a pretty good conductor. I've got the wooden disc. I'm going to try the same thing. I'm going to try a couple different ways. I'm not able to get that to light up. So I would consider that to be an insulator. Piece of copper sheet. Conductor. I've got a pen. It's got plastic on one side. It's got rubber on the other side. That makes sense to me. Now let's see if I can try that ballpoint part, the metal part, be a conductor. Makes sense. Screwdriver, metal part would conduct. The handle part, let's see if you can get that to light. I'm going to try some of this pencil graphite as well. You can see that that would conduct as well. So, like I said, we're, we're kind of introducing the idea, these ideas. We're having the students sort of discover on their own which of these products or which of these um, which of these items will conduct, which will insulate. A um, little bit of self-discovery, a little bit of trying to figure out okay, what do these things have in common? What uh, you know? What, do, what? How are they different? And uh, and demonstrating and illustrating those concepts there. So we'll move on to the next exercise. All right, so set up the arrangement shown using a 12 volt, uh, 0 0.1 amp bulb, and make sure that the power, power supply is set to 12 volt, we know that already is. And then we're gonna add our own connecting links to make the light bulb light up. All right, so we'll switch back. And I'm gonna set this up the way that they want it. So the simplest way for me would be to just the lines straight to either side here. Let's see if that'll light the light bulb. There we go. 
Again, in the workbook, it talks about the two different symbols, the one standing for the battery, the one standing for a bulb. Uh, the, the more that the students will look at these symbols, the more they'll begin to understand and, and it'll become sort of second nature for them to, um, you know, to understand these things. So the next page wants us to make other shapes with the links to make the light bulb light. It gives an example of an arrangement here. We can just kind of use our imagination. So I have a bunch of different carriers here. So maybe we'll come out this way. Here and I'm going to do the same thing up here. And the light bulb lights up. So the you know electricity can move through that circuit in many different ways. Um, you know, they this kind of demonstrates that concept. Um, also in this worksheet, we introduced the concept of a short circuit. So that would be uh, going from the battery or power supply back to the power supply without passing through any sort of, you know, without any, uh, any sort of resistance, so through a light bulb or any, any other component um, that, uh, you know, that could damage the, the power supply there. Uh, the next up, it's going to ask in this worksheet to create a, uh, a circuit to make two light bulbs light. Uh, in the worksheet, it says there are two ways to do this. Let me pop over there real quick so you can see that. Okay, so there are two ways to do this. One makes bulbs dimmer than, uh, than if there was just one bulb. The other way keeps them about the same brightness. So can we make both of these circuits? Now, um, some of you out there that are familiar with electronics will know that this is uh, basically introducing the concept of a parallel and a series circuit. So, oops, I apologize. Hitting things with my chair. So, I am going to make two light bulbs here. Uh, let's see this. So, I'm not sure, I think you'll be able to tell on the screen here, when we light these up, they're significantly dimmer than when we just had the one bulb in there. All right, so we've got we've done that one way. The other way is to make them make this circuit so that both light bulbs light up in the same manner, the same brightness. So let's see if we can do that. Okay, let's take a look. See how we did. Pretty good. So you can see each of the light bulbs has a path back to the power supply without having to go through the other light bulb. That's what's going to help make them light up, uh, you know, light up brighter. All right. So let's move on. We'll do one more of these just so you can kind of get an idea of the different things that we're looking at. We're going to create a circuit that has a switch in it. So we'll switch back over here. Like this. Again, a symbol here for switch right there. There's also this type of switch, which is just a, a, a press a press button switch. Same thing, same idea. All right, there's my circuit. And the switch turns the light bulb on. So let's switch back over to the PDF here. And we'll kind of just go through some of the other exercises that are here just so you can see what else there is to offer. Um, so again, we're talking about switches. We're talking about how an electric current can heat things up, right? We're going to touch the light bulb in here. It should be warm. Uh, this exercise has having you take strands of steel wool, put them across that sampler that we talked about. That should get warm and start to glow. Uh, we're going to get into electromagnetism, how electric currents can can create magnetism in, in metal objects. Uh, we get into electrolysis, chemical reactions with uh, using electricity. It's how uh, some rust is removed from certain parts. That's how some some of these things are plated, you know, nickel plating and, and zinc plating and all these things. Um, we get, again, deeper into switches, how they work, what they do, why they're necessary, the different types of switches. 
we get into fuses, why they're necessary. Uh, we're going to talk about all, again the symbols and the circuits and and how you know building these circuits based off just these symbols. So now we don't have we don't have the picture, the illustration of the board anymore. We've just got these symbols. So as the as the students are working through these things and learning these symbols, now they're creating these uh, these actual uh, circuits based on those symbols. Uh, again, we get into resistors as well. We've got some resistors and some different uh, some gauges here as well as so we get into how those work. Um, we're using those alligator clips I talked about, creating our own resistors out of a graphite rod and bulbs in series and parallel. Again, we introduced that concept already, uh, kind of now expanding on that and trying to figure out you know, the best ways to, to set up those circuits. And then we get into the quizzes and the teacher's notes. So that's the basic electronics kit. Uh, the other thing we've got is the advanced electronics kit. Well, it's advanced basics. Another, oops, sorry, let me switch back. So again, we've got another PDF. Again, I'll turn it out just to have it. In here, we've got some different components. You can use the same work board. But here we've got some more components. So we've got three AA battery terminals. We've got some more carriers here, some different resistors, um, some more coils, different things to use there. And we've got some nichrome wire carriers as well and that will be used for the different experiments. So again, these two, these two kits being uh, complementary to each other. Um, the second one obviously expanding on all the things that we learned about in the first kit. Here. All right, so we've gone through some of those exercises, as you can see, um, again, really hands-on, really, really kind of fun to mess with and play with electricity and, uh, in, a, in a relatively safe environment and figure out all these different kind of things that electricity can do. Um, electric, you know, the, the product line by, the, by Matrix, uh, the electronics product line, there's over 200 components available, more than 40 different curriculum packs. There's a solution for a wide variety of courses and topics, and each curriculum has plenty of content and can, can be supplemented as needed to further the student's understanding of the components and concepts demonstrated in each activity. If you have any questions about the electronics kit or for more information on how to purchase a kit, you can definitely contact us, uh, Antech Company, as uh, support at antechcompany.com or by calling 1-800-926-8359. You can also visit antechcompany.com to learn more about all the different solutions we can offer. Thanks for joining and have a great day.